Alrighty guys, so welcome to the rebuild video of our Saab Draken Draken, however it's pronounced by Michael Hanna. This can be purchased at 3dlayprint.com under the 3D Lay Gang tab. Now I had built this model previously and the initial maiden flight did not go as planned. I'll throw that in here. Oh wow, oh, yeah. elevator, go! But anyways, with any build, you want to make sure that you are in a well-ventilated area. I'm right next to this door that leads right outside because this activator is acetone, at least for the Starbond stuff. I love this glue. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. Me and my buddy Jay both use this stuff. It's awesome. And the glue itself does give off fumes too that are pretty, they're pretty pungent. They're not that pleasant. So definitely be in a well-ventilated area and definitely have some sandpaper handy. I use 180 grit just to rough up the edges of the parts that are being joined together. I don't know if it's totally necessary. It's just one of those things that I do to ensure that there's no risk of them popping off. But with that being said, let's get this video started. If I think of any other tips and tricks, um, I'll key them in at some point in the video. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, but let's get started. I'm not sure how well this is gonna come through on the camera, but one of the things that I love about when you sand these 3D printed parts is, uh, the red line, you get this funky little sound that I don't know. It's time for us to get started with the gluing of the Saab Draken by Draken by Michael Hammer. And another tip that I can throw in here always have a paper towel handy because you are going to get glue in places where you don't want it, and you're going to want to have something to wipe it, and you don't want it to be your finger. Because if you use your finger like I did, you're going to be sitting there for three hours with a piece of sandpaper sand and just jump up your finger. So, let's continue on. So this is an example of something you may run into when you're building one of these 3D printed planes. You may need to make some minor adjustments because the file is perfect, but there might be some kind of irregularity that comes with the print, or there might just be something that's a slight bit off. I do remember having to do this with the first model that I built. There's a couple of little nubs over here you gotta trim off just to make sure that everything all fits together perfect. So I gotta grab some tools and we're gonna do that right now. That was a pretty quick fix. So I just ran, grabbed the uh, little nippers, nipped the pieces off and we're good. It was a quick little thing. And today's episode is sponsored by Mango Seltzer. Not really, I'm not sponsored by anybody yet. So at this point, I am going to take a break on gluing fuselage pieces together just so as that I have no issues with threading those servo wires through the fuselage into the battery hatch area. I learned that with the first model that I built when I had everything fully assembled. I was sitting there with a wire snake. It was a pain in the butt. So now we're going to stake the servos through, get that all together, and then we're going to finish assembling the fuselage. I stand corrected. I actually have to grab the YA snake anyway, so stand by. So this is a great tool. It's been pretty invaluable to me. I don't know how well it's gonna show up on camera because it's pretty small, but a lot of my models require the use of piano wire, and it comes in these very long segments that more times than not, I wind up with leftovers. So I just did a square bend on the end of this. You wrap it around the uh, servo connector and you just yoink that boy right through the plane and it comes right through. Things are charm, man. I just realized I made a huge mistake and I printed this part totally wrong. So uh, I gotta reprint this part now. So stand by. Okay, so it was 100% a goof up on my part. I put two layers over here when there was supposed to be two layers up here, but I was actually able to just peel it off. It kind of came off really easily, thankfully. But now this guy's kind of just floating in the breeze, so now I just gotta make sure that I attach this properly, being there's nothing holding it in here, so we're gonna improvise. Did I? I printed another piece wrong. Stand by. And we're back in business. That took like two seconds. This is awesome, man. 
more adjustments. I'll be right back. Now we're back in business, hopefully. Now it's time for us to do this thrust tube for the EDF boy. And the way this works is you have, come on. So, I don't know what, this was way easier the first time, I promise. Um, there we go. Okay, so this slides over the back of the EDF and this lines, what in the world? This lines up with the tube in the part of the fuselage that is behind this and the EDF slides into the forward part and there's these three points where you screw right into the, um, right into the 3D print actually. So, yeah. Side note, also a tip. Um, you can use a screwdriver, I just think it's a pain in the butt. If you have a screw gun and you have the feature where it will ratchet, Turn it down to its lowest setting so is that when you screw into something, well, I guess to a certain point, it just ratchet. So it's not even going that tight, so you don't risk cracking anything or stripping out the plastic. Okay, so just to give you a close up of what the EDF looks like EDF is nestled right up there in the front. The very front intake of the EDF is wedged into the 3D print. And the mounting points are right here. You have these four screws and there's a mount ring around the EDF that's a friction fit with some, I just use some masking tape. That holds that place. And the EDF tube, which is this part right here, which is usually loose. It's just a friction fit as well over the tape. I threw a little bit of uh, CA right here just to tack it on there. Probably don't need it, but I just rather have it not need it. Ready for the next step. Now it's time for the assembly of our battery hatch door thing. And the way that works is you have these two pieces. This is a slider that slides in and out of here and there's a pen spring that pushes it out to lock it and this gets glued in after the fact as a retainer and a way for you to grab the, uh, the latch. So yeah. So this is the battery hatch with the uh, pen spring. You can see me depressing the lock right here and it just pushes it right back. Now we gotta attach our piece that'll actually have us grab it and release it. Yeah. Works. Okay, so my phone died right as I was finishing this thing up, but as it stands right now, this plane is ready to go. All I gotta do is put some Velcro in here, do the ESC, put the uh, push rods on the Elevons, and I held off on putting this nose cone on because I wanna make sure that this thing is not tail heavy like last time. So if I need to add weight to the nose, I can just slide it right in here and then adjust as necessary. But yeah, 